Um, बात ही बंद कर देना प्लीज समो डिनामिक्स ऑफ ओपन सिस्टम्स एंड what you mean by open systems is that system allows exchange of matter and uh, therefore number of particles or number of moles becomes a variable and therefore u is not just a function of s and v but is also a function of n because of this we wrote we modified the first and second laws of thermodynamics that we normally put together phir wahi usi dar se baatein aa ho rahi hain wahi pe please lecture shuru hone ke baad baatein nahi ho du equal to t times ds Minus p times dv plus mu times dn is the changed form. We added mu times dn, and correspondingly, we had other energy functions defined in the same way. dh, for example, is uh, t. d s plus p d v plus mu d n etc sorry kya hua oh 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 i'm sorry okay and uh, so on a series of these functions and then consequently the functions that give you give give uh, these functions like like temperature pressure chemical potential as derivatives of energy with respect to other variables and also um the last thing that we did was um uh a few more maxwell relations this is what where we ended in the last lecture i will introduce today what is called the euler equation i will also introduce uh, another equation which is called uh, gibbs duhem relation बातें दीज टू थिंग्स विल बी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग्स इन थर्मोडिनामिक्स दोज ऑफ यू हु विल बी डूइंग केमिकल थर्मोडिनामिक्स will come across these relations quite frequently but order equation is very interesting from the point of view of uh, the way we write uh, relations among thermodynamic variables we are all familiar with this form du equal to tds minus pdv plus mu dn so this is a differential relationship uh, among the variables what euler showed was 
a different kind of relationship, and I will uh, derive that relationship first. It says U is an extensive quantity and therefore extensive quantity means that if you half the system into two equal parts, the quantity itself also gets halved into two equal parts. Okay? Which means that if I write u and write it as a function of some constant lambda multiplied by s, some constant lambda multiplied by v, and some constant multi and multiplied by n, that is to say it depends upon n V and S, but then um, multiples of lambdas, then I can write, I, I, from the property that this is an extensive quantity, I can write this as lambda times U, a function of S, V, and N. All right? So if I increase the volume by lambda, N by lambda, and S by lambda, the entire U also gets increased by the factor lambda. Okay? This is the using the basic property of uh, uh, extensive nature of thermodynamic variables. Now, <clears throat> Euler said, okay, this is given, so why don't we take a derivative, partial differential, partial derivative with respect to lambda of these quantities on the left hand side of this quantity and on the right hand side of this quantity. Take partial differential on both the sides. On the right hand side it is easy to see because uh, this is partial differentiation it will act only on explicit dependence on lambda and uh, partial differential of uh, this quantity which doesn't depend upon lambda with respect to lambda is zero so it is only this lambda and therefore this quantity is equal to u of uh, s v and n on the right hand side okay on the left hand side we have to evaluate this quantity. So what do you propose we do? Any input from you? Any suggestion how to calculate d by d lambda of this quantity? Should be a simple... No? Okay. Um, we will say that we will take um, d by d lambda, I will take d u um, by d um, this, okay. Um, you remember, let me, let me, let me uh, go to the next one. You remember that if you have u a function of uh, s, v, and n, then um, uh, du by dx will be equal to partial differential of u. No, I will, I will uh, stick to the expression that I have over here. What I will do is, I will say that that quantity I can write as partial differential of uh, u with respect to the variable that it, that it depends upon multiplied by partial differential of lambda s with respect to lambda plus partial differential of u with respect to lambda times v. It depends upon lambda times v. So we take differential of u with respect to lambda times v and then multiplied by partial differential of lambda times v 
with respect to lambda plus partial differential of u with respect to lambda times n times partial differential of lambda times n with respect to lambda. All right, this is how we can write, okay? Mathematical, mathematically um, accurate way of writing it. Lambda some constant, okay? So uh, in this expression, the number, the volume, the um, entropy gets increased by a factor lambda, and that results in internal energy increasing by a factor lambda. So lambda is some constant, 2, 4, 5, 1.5 or whatever. And that quantity on the right hand side is equal to u as it is. Now on the left hand side you can easily see that this quantity is s only, so s times du by d with respect to lambda s plus here we have v times du by d with respect to lambda v and then plus n times du by d lambda n. And this is equal to u s v n n. Okay? Fine. Now here, uh, this should be true for should be true for any value of lambda. All right. So. Uh, this one. So if I differentiate this quantity with respect to lambda, this is a partial differentiation. S now is uh, uh, d by d lambda, partial derivative of S with respect to lambda is zero. So what you get is only differentiating the lambda with respect to lambda which gives you one. So the point is that the question that he asked and therefore reminded me that I should be um, I should go slow and explain everything. Um, lambda times s, if I differentiate with respect to lambda, I should write it as d lambda by d lambda times s plus lambda times partial differential of s with respect to lambda. I should do that, right? And this quantity is zero because s does not depend explicitly on lambda. Okay? A partial differentiation is uh, zero when there is no explicit dependence. So this is zero and this is equal to therefore S only. This is what I wrote here. All right? And here and here. All right? So um, should be true for any value of lambda. And therefore, it should be true for lambda equal to 1. So, <clears throat> therefore, true for lambda equal to 1. And when lambda is equal to 1, what you get is S times partial differential of U with respect to S plus V times partial differential of U with respect to V and n times partial differential of u with respect to n is equal to u, s, v, and n. All right? I just, what I did was, I said lambda equal to 1. And this is what I get. But partial differential of u with respect to s is T, temperature. So what we get? is from this equation S times T plus minus V times P plus N times mu is equal to U. I get this expression where the not the differentials of variables 
form the equation, the variables themselves form the equation. Okay? And this has come about because of this extensive nature. And this is what is called the Euler equation. All right, Euler equation uh, says that actually u is equal to s times t minus v times p plus n times mu. And that each one of these terms describes an energy, not a difference in energy as in this case, where du describes change in internal energy, change in thermal energy, change in mechanical energy, and change in chemical energy. Here it is energy itself. Internal energy is equal to thermal energy plus mechanical minus mechanical energy plus chemical energy. All right. So basically, sum total of all energies, and uh, this is called Euler equation. And we should keep that as uh, an important conclusion in uh, our lives. Immediately. From this expression, if I were to use this expression, I will say, now what I will do is, if uh, this is true, then what will it give if I were to write it in a differential form? So I say, okay, let me differentiate it. Let me take a differential of this. So I will write du, and du is equal to d of st minus d of pv plus d of uh, mu n which means that du is equal to um, s times dt plus um, uh, t times ds from this term minus p times dv minus V times DP from here and plus mu times DN plus N times D mu. Okay? As simple, as simple as that. And when I do this, I immediately notice that this term plus this term and plus this term happens to be when these sum together it gives you DU. So this is du plus sdt um, minus vdp plus nd mu. All right? This is the expression. And d mu and d mu on the two sides cancel out. Okay? And because they cancel out, I am left with an expression which says that d mu, n times d mu, um, I will, okay, n times d mu um, is equal to minus s times dt plus v times dp. All right? So I have used, I, I said, if Euler equation is correct, then this must be correct. Follows in a straightforward manner. And I can actually um, take, um, divide by n, n could be n could be number of particles or number of moles could be any of these two number of particles or number of moles so I just divide by n and I get d mu equal to minus s or I will write it here s over n times dt plus v over n times dp okay and um, 
this quantity is equal to minus s times dt plus v times dp. I could actually, you know, not do this. I just stay over here and notice that in my old scheme of things, this is what I wrote as equal to this right hand side. I wrote as equal to d times d of g, change in the Gibbs free energy. If you go back to your notes, you will notice that minus s times dt plus v times dp is equal to change in the Gibbs free energy. So what we have is an identification, an identification that d mu is um, uh, it is the same as dg, provided we say that mu is g over n. G is Gibbs free energy, and mu chemical potential is actually molar Gibbs free energy. So in terms of physics, chemical potential and Gibbs free energy are related to each other in this particular manner. Now, the relationship that I have over here, which is I will put this d mu on this side and put it in a box, is called gibbs duhem relation. which is actually a relationship very useful in chemistry. Oh, okay. I have defined this small s. I have defined this small s. Three lines means definition. Capital S over N. Molar entropy. Similarly, small v is uh, capital V over N molar volume. Okay? So uh, what, I ha what we have over here is actually a two important results on the same board. Um, one is the Euler equation and the other is gibbs duhem relation which relates um, chemical potential to change in chemical potential to these quantities and that you will immediately notice is the same as uh, <clears throat> change in uh, Gibbs uh, free energy, molar Gibbs free energy, and therefore the identification that chemical potential is uh, molar Gibbs free energy actually. It is molar Gibbs free energy. Okay. <clears throat> This was, uh, these are two important results that we, that I thought would be interesting to you, in, you know. And these would be very useful for, these are usually very useful for um, chemical thermodynamics. We will have some time next week, um, uh, some topics, we will cover some topics on chemical thermodynamics next time. Um, try and see how thermodynamics is used in chemistry, in chemical kinetics. That will be uh, next week. So let me now move on to uh, another topic. Uh, what I'm doing at the moment is that I'm looking at uh, these, uh, the combination of these variables in different forms, one after the other, so that you get to see how all of these manipulations go on in thermodynamics. Um, that. Um, you only have to follow the logic of uh, uh, differential algebra, differential calculus, and you get all these quantities that you come across. And wherever we find a particular connection with actually what is done in, um, uh, you know, in, in laboratories, we will connect them, connect these things with them. Uh, okay, in my next topic, 
which I will, I hope to be able to cover today. I will again do a lot of algebra. Uh, so uh, this algebra will not be very difficult. It will be simple, straightforward. Uh, and in this algebra, you will see, you will also get to see how things are algebraically manipulated in um, in um, such um, parts of physics. And I will, we will, we will arrive at some important results and conclusions, especially <coughs> when we use um, equations of a state of very specific nature. For example. We also we know already two um, equations of state. Number one, the equation of state for an ideal gas where there is no interaction and particles um, you know, are free to just uh, move about. Um, and then the real gas equation, which I uh, wrote down in my very first lectures as um, uh, uh, what are all the equation of state? Okay, so we will apply these results that I am going to describe today to those two uh, gases and see the results coming out of them. Okay, uh, I am going to therefore talk of um, um, integrating. Um, differential forms uh, and the purpose will be to get expressions for thermodynamic quantities and I will explain this to you in um, very briefly an example of uh, integrating um, um, quantities is uh, provided by a um, let me first let me see which things I should tell you first and then I will um, describe them okay so let me tell you this uh, thing first if I have uh, a um, change of heat capacity with volume. How do we see heat capacity changing with volume? So we will have very high heat capacity and we say that heat capacity we look at change in heat capacity.
Integrate the right hand side, integral t naught v naught to t and v uh, cv over t times dt. Let us change the variable of integration, so make it t prime and t prime, so that we don't confuse it with this uh, upper limit, t, and then plus um, Again, we integrate t naught from t naught v naught to t and v. This quantity, which is partial differential of p with respect to t at constant v dv. Okay? And we need to now work through this expression on the right hand side to get what we want to get. The objective is to get the difference between these two values of s so that if we know one value we should be able to get the other value. So that we know the value of entropy somebody says that this is the value of entropy at t naught v naught we should be able to get it for any value of t temperature and volume. And therefore we need to integrate these expressions on this side. All right. We could actually check this in a slightly different form also. Um, so why should I do this? This is already so clear and obvious to you. Um, I don't need to do these things. Save time. So I will evaluate these integrals with uh, um, uh, with, with uh, for 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 uh, wonder walls equation. I will make a short form this, okay? I will, in future I will write V D W for Van der Waals, okay? Um, you remember from our day one or the initial lectures that Van der Waals equation of state is P plus A over V squared. I will actually put it in the form that I used at that in that lecture which is um, n r t over v minus b times n minus a times n squared over v squared where n could be capital n could be small often we write small n for molar number and capital n for num number of particles I actually can write this in terms of molar volume, okay? And in terms of molar volume, I will write this with as RT over V minus B minus A over V squared, where I have written V equal to capital V over N molar volume. Okay? And uh, there's another form in which this is written. This is good, good enough. Uh, which is usually P plus, if you see it in this, in this form, don't be um, too um, uh, surprised because this is how it is usually you will find in some books written this particular manner. Okay? So, this is the same as this. You can see immediately. Now, this is the, uh, this is the expression for um, 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 Van der Waals equation of state. If we know this, um, can we, for example, get dCV by dV at constant t? What will it be? 
Um, notice that if I were to take partial differential of P with respect to T for a Van der Waals gas, I can move faster, right? Okay. So dP by dt at constant V, glad to hear this, is equal to R over V minus B. Okay. I could be consistent and write this V also as constant molar volume. Intensive quantities cannot be written as molar quantities because they are intensive variables. So for extensive variables alone, we can write molar quantities. Now this is dp by dt at constant volume is given by this. From this expression, if you take partial differential respect to temperature, um, there is no explicit de part temperature dependence over here. Whatever it is, is over here. And therefore, that quantity d2p by dt squared um, at constant volume is d by dt of r over v minus b at constant volume happens to be zero. You are right. This is zero, right? It comes out to be zero. So this double differential actually inside is equal to zero. And therefore, CV, partial differential of CV with respect to V at constant temperature, um, which we noted was equal to here. This quantity was equal to this quantity is actually equal to zero for uh, for Van der Waals equation of state also. Which means that heat capacity, the change in heat capacity is zero, and therefore heat capacity doesn't, doesn't depend upon volume at all. Uh, CV does not depend on volume, it depends only on Temperature. A good conclusion. Heat capacity, even for real gases, forget about ideal gases, even for real gases, heat capacity does not depend upon volume. It depends only on temperature. So if you can, and we were calculating heat capacity, change in heat capacity with volume in an isothermal situation where temperature doesn't change. There we conclude that there is no change. Heat capacity would, is the, is, wouldn't change at all. Okay. Let us also go back to the expression for, uh, oh, where did that go? Here. Uh, here, this expression. Uh, for entropy change. Now, entropy change is given by these expressions and dp by dt happens to be equal to, uh, so the first term will remain as it is. We don't know what to do with it. We only will have to integrate these quantities and we don't know if Cv is constant over this temperature range, but this is Cv over T prime dt prime is the first term. And the second term, we see from top over there that 
dp by dt is r over uh, v minus b. So it is uh, uh, integral plus integral uh, t naught v naught to t and v r over r is the gas constant over v minus b and I'll continue to put dv prime and this v prime over here and you will change and see how capital V and the small b if that makes any difference or not. Suppose, suppose we consider heat capacity to be constant in this range so that in the first term we can take it out. always be true, we are just saying that suppose this is the case, then we can take it out and therefore S at T and V will be equal to S at some initial point T naught V naught plus C V times log of T from T naught to T and plus log of V minus B plus R times log of V minus B from V naught to V. This comes in from here. And therefore one can write heat capacity as equal to Cv times log T plus R times log V minus B plus constant. So the lower limit in here has gone into this constant. The lower limit over here has gone into this constant and S T naught V naught has gone into this constant and the temperature and volume dependence of entropy has come out just in this form. Okay? Just in this form. And um, this, is, this is what I meant by saying integrating differential forms and trying to get these quantities. All right? I have uh, saved you two pages of something that I just realized didn't quite, um, were not very interesting things. Let us also calculate in the last ten minutes, huh? Abhi se? Kitne zafay bhare aad logo ke noos? Kaapiyan khatam ho gai hai? ये एक हफ्ते की छुट्टी ने आप लोगों को काहिल बना दिया है, सुस्त बना दिया आप लोगों को। ओके, एक बात ये बताएं, नेक्स्ट लेक्चर में जो वेंसडे को है, आप लोग साढ़े ग्यारह बजे ज्वाइन कर सकते हैं क्लास को। क्लास होती है आप लोगों को? लैब होती है। अच्छा, तो यू करेंगे फिर के ये जो आपकी next class hai wo hum chhoti kar lenge kyunki i have to go somewhere to aaj uski jagah uski jagah kaam kar lenge nahi 
पसंद नहीं आया आप लोगों चले क्यों करेंगे कि आइंदा कभी टाइम रिकवर कर लेंगे उसका राइट ठीक है सो नाउ लेट मी सी ए सिमिलर थिंग विद इंटरनल एनर्जी जो कुछ भी आज हम देख रहे हैं वो ये है कि आप कैसे कैसे आप लोग कैसे हम डिफरेंशियल फॉर्म्स जो हमारे पास दी हुई हैं उनको इंटीग्रेट करके यू कैन फाइंड द क्वांटिटीज इन अ फॉर्म विच कैन बी ऑप्टेन फ्रॉम एक्सपेरिमेंट्स जैसे कि यहाँ पे हमने देखा कि यू कैन पर दिस इज द टी एंड वी डिपेंडेंस कमिंग आउट फॉर एंट्रोपी इन एन एक्सप्रेसिव फॉर्म फॉर ए for for a wonder wall uh, gas internal energy um, quickly in half a page is uh, uh, you know this uh, uh, du equal to tds minus pdv is an expression that we always start our discussion with du and um, i can also i also have written up there ds equal to uh, cv over t dt uh, plus dp by dt at constant volume times dv i already have this expression which i have used in a couple of places this is where we were we had it um from these two i can write du as uh, equal to cv dt plus uh, uh uh t times partial differential of p with respect to t at constant v minus p times dv so how did i do this i put this ds over here so multiplied this quantity is quantity by t so i get cv times dt as the first term then t times this in the second term together with this minus p coming in from here times dv so this is the expression for du now um notice that if you were to have u as a function of t and v यहाँ पे यू टी और वी का फंक्शन है ना इफ यू वर टू हैव यू एज ए फंक्शन ऑफ टी एंड वी देन डी यू वुड बी इक्वल टू पार्शल डिफरेंशियल ऑफ यू विद रिस्पेक्ट टू टी एट कॉन्स्टेंट वॉल्यूम टाइम्स डी टी प्लस पार्शल डिफरेंशियल ऑफ यू विद रिस्पेक्ट टू वी एट कॉन्स्टेंट टी टाइम्स डी वी ये होना चाहिए था एंड जब फॉर यू इमीडिएटली कंक्लूड फ्रॉम हेयर these two equations that um t u by dt cv actually is equal to cv is equal to partial differential of u with respect to t at constant v a conclusion to unmistakable ye hai yahan se aur dusra conclusion jo hai वो ये के पार्शल डिफरेंशियल ऑफ यू विद रिस्पेक्ट टू वी एट कॉन्स्टेंट टी इज इक्वल टू टी टाइम्स पार्शल डिफरेंशियल ऑफ पी विद रिस्पेक्ट टू टी एट कॉन्स्टेंट वी माइनस पी इन दोनों को भी इक्वेट करते हैं आप दिस इज वॉट यू हैव ओवर हियर सो यू हैव दे फॉर दीज टू एक्सप्रेशन and in this expression we can calculate actually the right hand side from the equation of state for van der waals equation of state so this is fine this is this expression is something that we should keep in mind that heat capacity while it is t times ds by dt at constant v heat capacity cv is also du by dt at constant v in fact this is an old expression we had already 
obtain this in fact we had also obtained earlier cp is equal to partial differential of h with respect to t at constant p you will remember that from our previous uh, in, in one of our previous lectures all right now in this expression on the right hand side if i try and um, put values from for von der Waals equation for von der Waals system we know that dp by dt at constant v is uh, uh, simply uh, r over v minus v so t r over v minus b minus p and this happens to be equal to from the expression that i have for this quantity p minus t r over v minus b is a over v squared so it is equal to a over v squared interesting ke aapne yahan pe jo work out kiya wo ye ke du by dv at constant t is equal to a over v squared all right and um, if you were to now integrate this quantity because of this expression i can leave you with uh, a very simple exercise that you can do this will show you will show that u as a function of t and v happens to be equal to cv times t minus a over v plus cos again doing the same integration that i did for other cases in the case of entropy you can do this now for for energy you can perform this integration and you will get t and v dependence of internal energy in this particular form okay i think that should be it for today